I don't get it. Okay. <laughs> Exo Man's getting his hair cut by the professional. What was it that made you want to go into hair business? Uh, I don't know, I guess. When I was younger, I would bleach my friend's hair <laughs> and cut it. We, did we know about this? You, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, did your parents know about this? <laughs> you might have. You bleached their hair? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So then you like cut it. Bleach, bleach people's hair and put like blue in it. And I did it to my own hair. Um, so were there any other things that you did in the beauty profession at say oh, yeah. 12 or 13 years of age? Are you referring to my pedicure? Oh, were you a pedicure? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. Tell us about that. What did you do? I couldn't get paid for it because I was like 12. Uh-huh. So at the at the spa, I would do pedicures and just take tips. You work at the spa? Yes, at your spa. <laughs> you don't remember that thing? I vaguely remember. Now what did you do after that? How did you? What was your foray into the hair business? I, I mean, for real, not not cutting, bleaching worked, hairs, kids at your house. I worked at a salon when I was in high school for what, like three years. Three years. Huh? Oh yeah, before. And like, what were your duties at a, at a, at that age? You you could obviously you didn't have a cosmetology license. What could you do? Well, I swept the floors and I shampooed people and sometimes I would apply color just like the basic root touch up. So you couldn't screw anything up, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I that, wasn't supposed to be doing that, but Yeah, that doesn't sound like something that a high school girl without a cosmetology like this would be allowed to do. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to, but, but I did it. Anyway. So you, you cut your teeth at an early age, yeah? Yeah. Well, that's great. So that was a good uh, a good experience? Yeah. Oh, and I did blow out sometimes. And I feel like that really helped me. So you were like that Fez guy on that 70s show. Yeah. <laughs> she has magic <laughs> fingers. Everybody loved when she uh -huh. washed their hair. I remember one time at the salon, one of my boss's clients told me that I swept really well. <laughs> <laughs> they were just trying to keep you encouraged. <laughs> and then you went to school. So what, what, tell us, was there any good, was there pay? Was the pay okay at the first salon? Or? Uh, yeah, for a high school kid. Five, six bucks an hour, seven bucks an hour? More than that, I'm sure. Really? Yeah. Good. And so then, all right, so Jennifer asked about your educational experience. How did that go? When was that? At what stage of your life? Um, right, well, I think after high school, I stayed there for um, the summer. Mm -hmm. You did. You stayed at home for the summer? Yeah, I worked at that salon. And then I came here to Charlotte to go to Aveda. And you started in December, right? I started in April. So you want to so tell March. Her, so you moved to Charlotte at eighteen. Yeah. On your own? Yeah, no. So you had some roommates. Yes. Okay, so you you worked in a salon near your home and then you moved to a big city far away from home and lived with roommates and four hours far away. And you went to school. That's tell, far. Tell us about <laughs> your school and what where what it was and what the experience was. Uh <laughs> it was Aveda, which is like pretty well known in the hair world. So, I mean, I guess some people think it's a better education than you can get at other places. And I kind of think it really just depends on the teachers that you get. Yeah. But it is nice to have the Aveda behind your name so that when you go out into the world to try and get a salon job, you can have a VEDA behind you. And 
people respect that. Um, but I think I got a pretty good education. There's a little drama. <laughs> That's kind of hair school. What was the drama? Is it, so there's drama in hair school. People want to know this. Well, even, I mean, not even necessarily with the students, but with the staff. Mm -hmm. there, I remember that. There was some drama. But do you remember there was a lot of drama? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to call people so, out. So they had, they had some staff that were poorly performing. Yes, and also just being bad. <laughs> they allowed subpar instructors. Yeah. I'm sure some of the instructors were good. Yeah, a lot of them were really good. I loved a lot of them. Yeah. There was really just one that I didn't like. Well, a couple that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. But like with the... They were just unprofessional. Yeah. But you got a good education nonetheless, obviously. Yeah, and I think it also has a lot to do with... Um, like being a good hairstylist has a lot to do with uh, your training that you get in salon. Uh -huh. So it's like an internship. It's like a residency. Yeah. So you went, so okay, so the school experience was a solid year? 1,500 hours. 1,500 hours at Obeda. And then you can either, you can, well, you have a lot of choices, but I decided to go to a small salon where they didn't have a training program, but I kind of shadowed some older hairstylists or hairstylists that had been doing it for a while and learned a lot of stuff that way. And then I started taking clients and just learning on my own. Yo! What was good and bad. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, I never heard messed up too much. You did great. Much. <laughs> what was the salon that you interned at? Orange Olive. And there was decent pay in the beginning or no pay? Yeah, there was pay in the beginning. So you pay got, for her to stand I'm around. sure that you quickly grew dissatisfied and now grew your position. Yeah, I stayed there for almost five years. Wow. Which um, grew my books so that was, a lot. So that was paying your dues. Yeah. So a year of education and five years of paying your dues, and now you feel like you're sailing. Yeah. I'm still learning. Uh, from what I can tell, uh, I know this young lady. You're, you're a world traveler. You do everything on your own. You don't. You don't have rich parents, so it seems like you're uh, you're writing your ticket with this hair profession. Isn't, yep. that, isn't that fair to say? Yeah. Tell us about the, the. Do you rent or own your business? Well, I rent my booth, but. Good answer. You have an accountant? <laughs> yes. So you hired an accountant and tell us about uh, your <clears throat> tell us about the business financially, that how that's structured in retail versus uh, hair design and what what the, what margin of profit comes from what. What do you mean? Well what how do you profit in this business? What do you what are the things what are the profit centers? Um, well, color obviously is the most profitable service I do. So cut and colors are really good, um, but I have a lot of men's cuts too, just because I'm a men's cutting specialist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the majority of your income would be what, what demographic? Mostly women in their 20s to 50s? Or? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I have a lot of men's cuts. They don't, they, I don't make as much money with men's cuts, but I have a lot of them. Um, well, well, I guess you make up for it in volume. Yeah. Uh -huh. And... Selling product so really product helps. Is, is product a big part of your profit margin? Yeah. 
I understand that in some salons it's up to 70% of the profit is in product. Would you say that's fair? Or mm, not me. Estimate? Maybe no. with like a bunch of people in there selling product all the time, like orange olive. Oh, if you had a staff and it wasn't just you. you yeah. Know, if you had a sales force. But you do have a healthy part, portion of your pro, uh, profit coming from product, correct? Mm hmm. Oh, that's great. I think it's supposed to be 35 to 50%. All right, so what kind of products do you sell? What, what lines do you sell? I sell Davines, which I've been working with since I got out of the out of school. Um, so like almost six years. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. How old a person are you? <laughs> I'm about to be 26 wow. in May. Wow. You say 25, honey. <laughs> I just feel like it's coming up so fast. I know. I do the same thing. Well, well, that's great. Anything else you'd like to add? Is it for, no for, young, for young women looking for, for a career? Would this be a good choice? I if guess, they're interested in it, it's I mean, a lot of work if you're not. I'm sure a lot of people want to do it, but not everybody. It's probably not for everybody. No. How would a young person know whether they were inclined to do this or not? Uh, whether this would be a good career path or not? Should they be artistic? Yeah, definitely artistic. Um, were you artistic when you were a child? Yeah. You tell me. Oh, that's right. I know you. Yeah, she wanted to design flowers. I always, I always thought I that you had a really, mm -hmm. really profound sense of design when you would do your drawings. Most children do drawings, and yours were very design oriented. You had a keen eye for that structure and interesting shapes and designs. Yeah, I think a lot of people think that it's easy and you don't have to go to college, you just have to go to to school for a year or so, so they think it's a good option, but then they realize that it's actually really hard so and they have to really like it. So there's a, a, a lot of, uh, there would be a lot of dropouts, Yeah. a lot of attrition in the industry, okay. So you just, you got to know what you want and go for it. Look at that retail. I'm actually running really low, <laughs> so don't look at it. Stock up. Mm. What are you pouring me, Mama? Spicy. Spicy? Stout. Is this the habanero stout? It's a stout stout. Have you had some? Yes. Oh my I god, it's like sip. cough syrup. It's like, I don't know, it might, it's burning right there. <laughs> the, uh, the, well, the one that I had at the brewery was like 12, 11.79 percent. Uh, That's why they only gave me that much. Yeah. And it was like, eight uh, bucks, almost eight bucks. Yeah. One little shot for you. <laughs>